be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, another church year begins, and it begins where it always does, uh, which is going towards the ending of Christ's life. The reading for today is the same as the reading for Palm Sunday. Different gospel, but the same story. And it's Jesus going down into Jerusalem, riding a donkey, going towards Jerusalem with, with everybody praising his name and singing out, as we do every Sunday, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Every Sunday we sing that. We sing that as part of our communion liturgy. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who is coming in the name of the Lord. Uh, many of us have those words memorized, so we don't even look at our hymnals. But if you did look at your hymnals, you'll see during that text of the Sanctus, uh, there are two words that, that maybe people don't know because we don't use them all the time. And so they explain them. One is Sabaoth, which usually we might think means Sabbath, means that restful day, but Sabaoth is a different word. It means Lord of hosts. So God, who is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all the angels, of everything. And that's one word. The other word, though, is what's in our text today, and that is Hosanna. And we sing that Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What does Hosanna mean? Well, if you looked in your hymnals, you would see it means save us now. That's our prayer every single Sunday. Lord, save us. When do we need saving? Well, usually we need saving when we can't do anything of ourselves. Sadly, that's sometimes the only time we go to God in prayer is when we've exhausted all other options and we know that we can do nothing else, and so we go to God then to save us. Now, does he enjoy that? Yes. Call upon his name in every trouble. We also should pray, praise, give thanks, and talk to him more than just when we're at our end. But that is one reason we go to him. Lord, save us means we have nothing else we can do, and so God, we need you. What do you need saving from? Well, if you're here, you probably have something. Something that's troubling you. Something on your hearts and minds. That's sadly one of the reasons our, our sinful flesh goes to church is when things are bad, we come. That's why church attendance usually goes up during times of national trouble and goes down when everything is peaceful because we often live our worship lives like we do our prayer lives. We go to God when we need him. And so we go to God to save us. Save us from what? Again, I'll ask you. What do you need saving from? What do you need help with? What do you pray for? If you could have one prayer answered today from coming to church, what would that prayer be? Would it be about your finances? Would it be about a relationship with somebody else? Would it be about the weather or a storm? or some kind of disease. If you only had one prayer, and sadly, this is the way sometimes we treat God, uh, we'll come and we'll worship him when we need him. When we have that one thing that we cannot do anything ourselves anymore about, and so we come to God and we say, Lord, we've done everything we can. Save us. Thanks be to God, he hears those prayers. And he does listen to them. And he knows that we need his help. But again, I'll ask you, if you could have one prayer answered, and only one, and that means your other prayers would not be, what would they be? What would it be? It's actually a pretty horrible question. That's a question that treats God as if he's some genie in a lamp. There to do our bidding, and so we might want to take care of what we pray for and make our prayers count. And so maybe that's one reason we don't go to God for all the little troubles is because we want to save it up for when we really need his help. When we treat God like that, we treat him like he's a star in the sky that we wish upon. Or he's a genie in our lamp. Sadly, that's the way we often treat God. That's when we come to him. Lord, save us. 
Well, dear Christians, the season of Advent is set aside for us to focus on what we actually need saving from. That doesn't diminish the relationship issues that we have or financial issues or sicknesses or illnesses. But the season of Advent is to prepare us to realize why Jesus came in the flesh. And it's not to save you from financial hardship or even from disease here in this time and place, to work miracles. You know, he did that throughout the Old Testament. He even raised people from the dead. The reason he comes at Christmas is not to save you from those things. It's to save you from your sins. Threatening perils do surround us. That's what we prayed in our college, that God would stir up his power and he would come and rescue us from the threatening perils. But then we have these words, the threatening perils of our sins, of being in a sinful world, which means this world is not perfect anymore. It has disease. It has sickness. It has droughts, it has strife, it has bad relationships. It has all these things that are caused because we live in a sinful world that has fallen and because we ourselves are sinful, fallen people who are often selfish and greedy and who think first of ourselves. But dear Christians, the reason Jesus came is not to get you out of a certain trouble. He came to save you from your sins. When the angel came to Joseph, when Joseph was debating himself with himself what to do about this whole situation of of Mary being with child and and what to do and how to maybe divorce her quietly or, or what he should do about this troubling situation that he was in, this maybe possibly fractured relationship, the issues that were going to go on with his own family, with all this stuff that was going on in Joseph's mind, maybe how to take care of this child, maybe all of these different things. The angel came to him and said, Fear not to take her as your wife and to raise this child and to do this. Name him Jesus. Why? Well, the angel told Joseph, Name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Not from strife, not from illness, not from disease, not from financial issues. Name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Hosanna. Lord, save us. It might not be our first prayer. That's a wonderful thing about the liturgy is it puts the right prayers into our mouth Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. We come here and we've got all sorts of issues. I know I do. I know you do. We have all sorts of things that God does want us indeed to come to him in prayer about. But the Sanctus puts this prayer on your lips and mine. Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Lord, save us and come to us. And here's the glorious thing. Right after praying that prayer Sunday after Sunday, he does it. He comes and he says, take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Here, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that name of Jesus, that name that says he saves. Here, he gives you salvation. And here he says, take and drink, this is my blood that was shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Hosanna, Lord, save us. And he does, each and every Sunday. He hears that prayer, and he immediately comes, and he answers it, and he delivers you the forgiveness of your sins. Dear Christians, that's what we need. That's why he comes in flesh. All those other prayers he could answer without coming in flesh, but he comes in flesh so that he can get on that donkey and he can go down to Jerusalem and he can preach and he can teach and he can be handed over and he can be crucified and buried and then raised from the dead so that you can have the forgiveness of all of your sins because there at the cross he takes them. Humble. He does not look like much. 
He doesn't look like much in the manger. He does not look like much at the cross. But I'll tell you, while he does not look like much, he is much. Because there he is your Savior. There he takes away your sins. And how blessed is he who comes in that name as he delivers you that forgiveness. And the true joy is that with that forgiveness of sins comes the answer to all those other prayers. With the forgiveness of sins, he brings life and salvation. Because when sin is gone, the wages of sin is gone, which is death. And all of those things that are threatening perils in our life, he promises to answer. Maybe not the way that we want him to. Maybe not here and now. But when he comes again, he will. When he comes again and restores this creation back to its perfection. When he makes you perfect. When he raises the dead from all of the graves in which we have buried them. When he comes again in his glory, there he answers all of our prayers. Dear Christians, let that be our focus this Advent season. That we see our Savior come to us answering that prayer, Hosanna. Lord, save us. And we know he answers it. Now may that peace, that peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding, may it guard May it keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen.